Hey guys, Daniel here. This is another video. In this video, my good friend Pornstack Pichet showed makes his triumphant return to the Daniel Feed 33 YouTube channel. Uh, but there is actually a reason for this, as I'm sure you know, Good Asian, one of the best comic book series of the last year or so. Well, today's a very important day. Pornstack, can you tell us why today is an important day? I'm, I appreciate you uh, qual qualifying it and describing it as important, but it is the uh, the final issue of the series comes out today. Uh, so it's certainly important to me. The book has been a long time coming. Issue ten wraps up uh, the whole wraps up the series, wraps up the book, and yeah, and I'm you know it it came out today. I've I've been awake for five hours maybe, so um, I'm still trying to process the fact that it's on stands that people have been. I woke up to people you know, messaging me and tweeting sort of about the finale. So that was really cool. And I'm still emotionally getting used to the fact that, oh, right, the book is out and it's, it's completed and people can now appreciate all of it. And, and they can tell me if it, if we stick the landing or not. As well, how, how unbearable have the hate messages been? Is it, is it only okay? <laughs> I mean, you know, the, the, the great, the great thing about, uh, 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 the great thing about sort of where I'm at and my career is that I'm kind of like a cool indie band where like the people who hate me just don't even bother to like, <laughs> don't even bother to message, you know, it's all just like love. It, it's funny. I, I was talking about it with a friend at like, at what point, how many Twitter followers can you reach before people just start hating on you to hate on you? You know, like what is that sort of level? I, I don't know. I haven't hit it yet. Thankfully. That's but, when uh, you I'm made waiting. it. Don't worry. When you get yeah, when you yeah. so much followers, people hate on you. Just to make you happy, I'll hate on you, porn Thank you. I appreciate it. That'll that. be my I next video. It. That'll be my next video. I'll just <laughs> you have had a busy day, so I appreciate you fitting me in on this historic day, the launch of the last issue. But before this, you cheated on me with another interviewer. And I mean, I know I did. How I am did. I supposed to follow John C. Untress? How am I supposed to follow words? You do. You do. First of all, first of all, the people that you have on your show, I am way more intimidated of following, unfollowing them than, 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 than anything. So I should be the one being intimidated to follow people. Nonsense. But. Nonsense. Funny. Your chat and Word Balloon is great. Everyone should go check out Word Balloon. It's hosted. But I mean, you obviously already know if you're watching my channel. It's fantastic. John C. Untress, a really kind guy. And he has some great interviews there. But no, I'm honored to have you on. Yeah. And like, there's so many different things to discuss, especially like we said, it's such a glorious day. But so what's it like for you saying goodbye? I mean, you just said you've been up for five hours. So is that overwhelming seeing kind of people actually finally reading this? And is this surreal? Well, it's weird. what's weird for me is so I just got back from from a trip. So I'm, I'm jet lagged. So I'm just like, what do I do for these extra three hours that I'm awake? So to see people like, oh, wow, people have read this because I... I forget there are people who get their Wednesday comics on like yeah. Tuesday night and they have all that sort of access to it. I get my comics like end of the day Wednesday. So like when people are up with reviews and all that sort of stuff, I'm like, who are these people and how can they have time to do this already? <laughs> um, so it, it's been wild just to, yeah. just to sort of see that sort of, you know, pour. and again, you know, uh, for last issue too, because it, it it's tough to hold on to that audience. So um, so they have that much enthusiasm for the last issue, uh, really means a lot. And and also the they, they their enthusiasm means that we haven't screwed up the ending. So I really appreciate that as well. Because when you're doing these mysteries, it all comes down to and we talked about this a lot as we were working on the book about how like it all comes down to that ending. You really got to make sure that you know people yeah. uh, that that you stick it and that, that you land the plane. Oh man, I can only imagine. So have you gotten much messages? Like was your phone just blowing up when you woke up? <laughs> I, I, it, it was less, it was less my phone blowing up and more, well, I guess more just looking at the different like feeds. Cause nowadays we don't, it all doesn't come through like one thing anymore. It's like, oh, this is through Twitter and this is through Instagram. And you got a carrier text. pigeon with a hate message. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You exactly. It it, like, a carrier pigeon is just flying with a stone. It's just like <laughs> knocking my window with this you're stone. Just ducking, you're just ducking, it's flying <laughs> yeah. past you. Yeah. You're ducking it. Up. See, that's, that's, that's the joy of comics. You know, I think we've all at some point tried to have an, like a bird try and kill us, but that's how you know you've yeah. made it. That's <laughs> yeah. how you know you've made it. Yeah. Second, yeah, when I a bird that. tries to kill you, that's officially when you've made it. Second, I did that Grant Morrison interview. I was, I was looking around. I could I, hear flapping in my vents. You, my friend, you, you were trending like you wouldn't believe after that Grant Morrison. Oh, I, I just name dropped like that, just because I bring it up all the time, man. That was like I. <laughs> I, I would too. Are you kidding me? If I if I interview Grant Morrison, hundred percent. One night, and then I I walked in as far as I could dentist. Like, <laughs> listen, I interviewed Grant Morrison, so that no one yeah. cares. It gets me a nice little level of fame, but no, no, but this is my money interview. Porn Sack P should show Aww. part two. This is like Terminator 2. That. It's going to be better than that. <laughs> you, 
that, that's appreciate. I do appreciate this because I it doesn't feel like you do a lot of return get or like you haven't done a ton of return guests. So I very wow. much appreciate you 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 asking me back i really really do it's because people they, they say once is enough i assume that's just how it is. <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. like no i had such a bad time. It. it's because i've run out of blackmail it, that's normally how it works <laughs> there you go. You, the blackmail is endless because you're constant. true it's true my life of sin makes it a fountain of blackmail it's true. it's constantly but that exactly this is this is how we bring it all back to making it but no <laughs> let's go back to the good did you always know it was going to be 10 issues because it was 10 issues from the start was it eight issues or did it well what's funny was it was 10 and then it became nine and then it became 10 again yeah uh, i think it was 10 at first and then i think what was it i think originally we were I think originally we were going to release it sort of all in, in, in one sort of trade. And, um, and, and I know originally it was going to be 10. We we're going to split it up the way, the way we did. And then uh, I think, I, I can't remember how we made a decision like, oh, I don't know, maybe we'll just do it as one trade sort of for, and, and then, and then when we did it that long, I was like, oh, if we're going to do it that long, let me make it a little bit shorter then uh, just to, just to get us across that finish line at nine. And then, when we launched, there was all this stuff happening with Stop Asian Hate and all that. It felt kind of important to get the book out a little bit sooner. And so then we sort of put out another book, uh, put out a volume one. And when we did that, we're like, okay, well, now it makes sense to expand it that extra issue that we were kind of always planned to. So in a weird way, we we ended up where we, we started. But we always knew it was going to be 10 issues. Um, I wish I, there, there's a part of me that wished if I, if, if, like if I could have found a way to tack on three issues, we could have labeled it an ongoing and ongoing sales are always better than like limit, limited run oh, really? sales. I would, I would think it was the opposite, but no, is that actually well, the case? Here, so here's the thing. So uh, um, th th this, uh, I apologize because I was just talking about this with John, but but it's a semi, I, I will go in more detail. So it's almost- I'm trying to get that word balloon views and money. Bring it I up. Know, Give I me know, another excuse. Come on, make a splash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Bleeding cool um, article incoming. Bleeding cool article. <laughs> there you go. Um, but one of the things that I, I will say is that um, I actually think that that what you see often in Marvel and DC, where you see the, that 12 issue like maxi series, when you're doing like a book like ours, when you're doing a creator own book like ours, that's actually the hardest format to sort of do. Because when you, uh, the, the, the best format, I think, if you're going to make a make a comic is either five issues or 15. And at five issues, you launch really high and then you're out before your attrition kind of hits you too hard. But yeah. at 15, what happens is 15, and I, I could be wrong, direct market sales might do this less, but book market sales, if they think you are volume one of X, your, your trade numbers will sort of spike because they're looking for to make an investment on that. Mm -hmm. So an ongoing series for them will get you more sort of trade sales from, from a bookstore. I, that used to be the case with direct market comic book stores, but I don't think that's the case anymore. So but are you gaming the you'll... system to make money? Well, for if you, I haven't done a 15 issue, 15 issue yet, but, but if I think you do sort of 15, you can launch as an ongoing series and yeah. 15 issues is the quickest amount you can get out before attrition kind of hits you while still being honest about being an ongoing series. Now I have definitely seen, and I'm not going to name names. There are definitely some like six issue series out there that launches an ongoing. And I'm the one looking there. It's like, dude, we launched like a mini series and we were <laughs> honest about 10 and you just launched at six. And you get all that great ongoing sales numbers. The, and the other thing you get from an ongoing sale, uh, ongoing yeah. series too, is that, you know, readers will actually start in the middle of the series for an ongoing series in a way they won't for like a maxi series. Like if yeah. you're end at 12, no one's going to jump in at like seven because you're like, ah, oh, it's only, you know, I'm only going to the last five. But if it's an ongoing series, there's a chance that you're not, someone will jump on a seven and kind of keep going from there. So I've definitely heard of books that, start off at like their first year that at eight, they're at 8,000, but by year two or three, if they're that successful, they've gone on to like 25,000 copies. Like that is definitely something wow. you've seen. So as a result, that 10 to 12 issue thing is so tough and Marvel and DC can get away with it because they'll put it out as quote unquote a season. And if yeah. it gets, if it's successful, they'll just either A, have the creative team stay on for another year or B, hire another creative team because it's a work for hire character. But for the stuff that we're kind of doing, it's a lot harder to do because we, I can't just like tack on more issues. Like there's too much research and too much work that goes involved. So 10 issues is actually the worst sort of like financially, 
it's the worst um the format to do and it's one of the reasons why that like i'm so stressed out and i'm like <laughs> i do every promotional material every promotional ch chance i take i will take it um i'll do I, your podcast I, okay please please I, you know, exactly exactly I, I you know i'm always asking people to talk up the book because the, the thing about the book is that if i had done a six issue miniseries it would have been an unqualified sort of success and everything after issue six to ten is just pure risk it's you know yeah. i'm i'm facing attrition and i'm doing that and i'm doing it purely just for the story and having something that will just be really good and stand the test of time but uh but yeah but everyone who at, like, everyone who makes comics are asking like why did you do 10 issues expecting there to be like oh the secret sales reason and i'm just like oh no it was just the best thing for the story i it, it's slowly killing the anxiety because i want to be loaded because i want to get that comic yeah, yeah, yeah. money What's yeah, that? Yeah, so your yeah. your your philosophy was 15 issues or five issues most successful and you go 10 issues yeah yeah i go the absolute like, financially <laughs> riskiest it's so sort of so, so so stressful because of it so yes uh, i i did the opposite of what i would want to do if i w wanted to make money i mean no but at the like the exact same time the good age like i mean even you 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 kind of had to do, it's been so successful like i mean i've seen so much about it people are talking about it on twitter like yeah. i mean ritesh obviously i'm sure you know he's uh he's someone such a oh my god i, I love his i live for his review i want everything i now live for the, i i now worry there will be the day where ritesh doesn't like my stuff because it will it, it, he's been so kind he's the, he's like me me and him are working together we're sending you like birds with the rocks he, yeah. he, he, <laughs> this is your this is your you know your villain character act. but no absolutely like it's been just a huge success people are talking about it everywhere so what's it been like for you seeing the success of good because this is like you know a big deal I can only imagine for you but what's it been like it, it's been kind of amazing I won't lie I, I can't totally sort of wrap my head around all that I'm still in the process yeah. but um it's been sort of very a I I'm a I can tend to sort of be a cynical person and we live in cynical times where you know you'll read news headlines and you just wonder if empathy is still a thing in the world mm -hmm. and and like I've been blown away by the amount of people who have really taken to the book because there's a part of me that was just like, and I've talked about it with these people, I've talked about this with Cliff Chang, where, um, you know, I just thought that like, are only Asian people gonna get this? Are only Asian people like this? Yeah. And the fact that the audience is so much bigger than that, and they're so passionate about it, and they talk about like, you know, you and everybody and John and all that, there's been so much, um, it's been sort of so embraced, has been really moving for me, but also been like, it's a it's a kind of a cheesy thing to say but it, it's also kind of been like helpful for me in just terms of just like my like good faith in the world or at least in the small like yeah. pool of comics that we live in that it isn't sort of like where empathy isn't the enemy and it's like it seems like in the sort of the rest of the world so it's been sort of really moving for, for me and really helpful and and you know writing the book is is had been tough like the book starts at such a dark place that is also at the same time, even when I started it, you know, was reminiscent to where sort of America was and slash is that yeah. I did get very sort of depressed while I was writing it. And, and part of the writing it is as Edison went through his arc, I kind of had went through sort of my own just sort of like, you know, realizing the world that there is like, I mean, it sounds so cheesy to say, but like hope in the world, but also like no, empathy no, in the yeah. world that people care. You know, and, and that's been kind of the amazing thing about the reception to the book is just this this acknowledgement and getting able to see that people do care. Yeah, no, you put it perfectly there. And I think the reason that, you know, you, you kind of brought up that point, about will this only appeal to Asian people? And that's an interesting point. And I think because, you know, obviously, maybe it's different for me reading this and just mm -hmm. because of my upbringing and stuff like that. And maybe yeah. it's different for you, Ryan. But the fact that I think why it did appeal to so many people is because it feels so personal to you. And I don't think mm. another writer could, have, I mean, you look at some other comics and you say, well, who wrote this? It could have been, you know, you could have two writers could say, well, it could have been either one. But for this, yeah. I don't think you could have had a different writer write this same story. So I think just like, because it felt so personal, that kind of led into its success. So do you feel the same way? Because I imagine. I, 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 I like to think so. I hope so. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, it, it's definitely a book that, and not just me, Alex and Lee and Jeff, and and will and dave like we're all putting everything we have on the field here and so you know and, and and so if you don't like what we're doing it's certainly not it's not because of lack of trying on our part and so we 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 are desperate to try to make you like this book and um and, and so i do think 
th there is that feeling of, you know, we're, we, we, we put a lot of care. I, I, I really appreciate the number of people who've been able to tell how much care we put into the book. Yeah. Like something that Evidence. we, thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you. Like, uh, like I will give Lee coloring notes after reading a lettering pass, which is not something like typically in the way comics are made, you see black and white letters and you see the colors and like, you kind of like imagine in your head what they look like together because of the way com in Marvel and DC because of the, the pipeline. And the, most of the time, uh, we will see lettered proofs for, for, for this book. Yeah. And, and, and the way it works is, of course, I have to green light, we have to green light the coloring so that Jeff and lettering can marry it with the lettering. And every single time, there's at least two panels that change, the coloring changes once we see them with the lettering. Because, you know, it was just like, oh, this moment would be hit a little bit harder if we had a stronger background color or a lighter background color or yeah. all this kind of stuff, you know? And, and, and I'm so grateful that um, I'm working with a team that is up for that. Like I hit Jeff with so many corrections and because that's part of my process and Jeff could complain about it, but he doesn't. And, and he doesn't because, uh, and, or he doesn't because like every time, and I will always apologize and he will always say, no, I get it. It makes the story better. And he will always yeah. sort of make those, those corrections. So I feel really grateful. And, and a thing that like, I can't, I don't know if this is exclusive. I don't know if people talk about it a lot, but I do think one of the reasons, or I don't think this is the, the reason, but I think it helps or makes me feel better at the very least is that on like I think a rare amount of creator owned books, everyone on the team gets a back end from the book. So, nice. you know, so yeah, so Lee gets it for colors, Jeff gets He's it. He's already for rich. Color. Why would you give him more money? I know. Lee, Lee, no. yeah, I know. Lee does not need to be encouraged on anything. As much as I hate to say it, Lee didn't do a bad job. He's the first creator. <laughs> The first creator I ever interviewed who threatened to beat me up, and I'm always grateful for that because it. Well, he, first of all, that me. yeah, yeah, he threatens to beat all his friends up. And yeah, but that's I, you know, it, that's part of his appeal, his charm. It's part of his appeal. It absolutely is part of his. Tell me, he's the I'm the, he's the first honest person I ever met, and I think he's right. I'm desperate to have him back on the channel, Lee. If you're watching this, we hate you, but you're such a good colorist. <laughs> he's like, so good. I mean, he's you know, so good. <laughs> Yeah, great comic person. I ever should go check out that chat. But no, yeah, Lee. If you want to see someone trying to beat me up, the, the Lee Lowridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Lee Lowridge will do that. You're making him richer as well. We all know he's loaded. I think he lives in some rich society somewhere above us. Yeah, 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 yeah. He he barely even he barely even comes down to like rub shoulders with. He with, has with his assistant. He has his flatter do yeah. do good Asian. He doesn't know what it is. He has his flatter do. <laughs> <Exactly. laughs> never even seen a page of the book before it's true <laughs> there you go but they're absolutely but no so the whole team is getting you know a piece of the pie on this yeah 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 so one of we the things that we do is everybody from our editor everybody everyone gets a piece of the pie um and and i don't i don't have a problem sort of talking about the numbers like you know everything that comes in once we make um w once once we sort of break even on the cost of the books it's 40, 40 to me and Alex. And then there's a 20% pool that gets shared with Lee and Jeff and Dave and Will. And that's all the money. So you know, if anything happens with media, the money goes to all of us. Anything happens with book sales, money goes to all of, all of us. And, and the book is done well. Like yeah. uh, the, the, the thing too that like, I, and if there's anything like where, where I don't think I'm doing a service to the book is I'm constantly worrying about the numbers because it's so risky doing a 10 issue sort of maxi series. But that said, if this was a six issue, we'd be an unqualified success. And, and the reason, only reason I want to sort of say that is because that the character, you know, of an Asian American male protagonist who is flawed, but tough and it lusts and is lusted after and doesn't have anything to do with mysticism or martial arts, like, yeah like yeah. there was very much an audience for that like that was that was not the riskiest part like stretching it to 10 issues where i could have done five was the risky part of this like there is definitely an audience for that and i and i really hope more more creators and more publishers sort of take it on like it it means a lot to me that you know uh, it, one of my favorite remender books like um a thirst for vengeance has like an, an asian american protagonist oh, yeah. like you know like um yeah, I think I just it's wanted, not something it, you see much, unfortunately. So, it, so unfortunately, yeah. Put something like that in it, I think, just because of there is there is obviously an appeal for that, but like you know, and there should be. And so the fact that you guys can have these books that sell with you know Asian American leads, I mean, sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah fantastic. And I think that's kind of 
speaks to the success of the good Asian, which is why I think it's such a great series. Every couple of years, one of the best series is of the year. But yeah, so I can, and I imagine putting, you know, yourself into this and obviously, you know, your heritage, because like, it's very intertwined with history. Like you can even yeah, see it yeah. in the first volume. So I think that adds an extra layer on top of it. 100%, 100%. Like, I mean, the, the, the goal is, the goal is for everything I write to, is to be a workout for your head and for your heart. And so for me, like that also involves me like, you know, looking at sort of like the history of it and finding bits that's interesting and informative and educational, but also trying to find that personal way in about having it mean something to me and and making sure that, you know, that I am kind of, it, it, being a writer can be a weird thing where you're like finding new ways to cut yourself so that your audience can watch you bleed. But I do <laughs> that's think- That's a perfect set. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And the, the, the thing about it too, is like with every new project, you're like, oh, I haven't cut myself this way. Like I my this whole arm, I haven't even touched. I haven't cut like, myself this way. Quote porn stock yeah, t-shirt. Yeah, yeah, I'll post yeah. up on Twitter. <laughs> I haven't cut myself and, this way. And so all of it is trying to like find- um you know, ways in like for your audience, but also like for yourself to like, yeah. you know, open up in a, in a new way. Cause I think, I don't know, like, I, I, I think, and if this, I think I kind of knew this, if this is all thing has taught me anything is that like, you know, I, I think people are hungry for empathy. And so, yeah. um, and I am certainly trying to, you know, provide that sort of on my side and hope, and I've been very lucky that my audience meets me on their side. Yeah, no, absolutely. I think, mean, like I said, I mean, like what a great series. So what I love about is that noir aspect because i think obviously noir comics are some of the best comic series and also let me just let me cut off a little bit is behind you is that a jock the losers cover that, that, yes i'm so glad you caught that i'm so glad you caught that yes i was thinking this whole time i was like where have i seen that before then i pieced it together you worked a vertigo the losers andy diggle jock and then i see it's very well jock. done yes it is a jock cover it's also not a well-known jock cover too because it's for volume five of volume five of the series Endgame, which was not a cover in the, was not a cover of the original series. Originally what happened was that poster, you know, so you can everyone yeah. see it. That poster there, I think was, uh, originally was a cover for issue 21 of the Losers, which was a British flag. And then when the movie was made, Peter Berg asked Jock to, to um, swap out the British flag for an American flag. And so that's where that came from. And then we used that cover as the cover for volume five Endgame of the losers and he was nice enough to make me a poster of it and then um and you so can't cool. sort of see it but it says to the harder drinker the hardest drinker in comics pp needs aa thanks for taking care of us and and the reason for that is and this might be an exclusive this is an exclusive nobody cares about but this is an exclusive the reason why he said that is i was once out drinking with um i'm not a big drinker and i was out drinking with andy diggle and jock and nachi castro who would go on to be editor uh be the head of idw you went drinking with two british men oh this is I, no exactly already that was that, yeah, that said, was said the irish man said the irish man but go yeah, on yeah <laughs> and so and and i was just like and jock was like oh do you want your usual a uh, drink and um and then he was like, and I was like, you know, you're making fun of me, but I don't usually drink. I've had a drink every night you've been in town, and that's a lot for me. And Jock and Andy were just like, a drink, a drink. Andy, have you ever had a drink before? I don't know if I've ever had a drink before. Maybe by accident, I meant to get another one, and then I forgot. But I don't, and are, Andy, are we alcoholics? What, what's what's happening? So ever since that is what that poster is in reference to. Lovely. So yeah. No, I no, love like, both those guys. No, and like comic book creators and drinking alcohol. That just says so yeah. But no, so do you have many like, you know, memorabilia with your vertigo days? Or is that kind of just one of your only pieces? Uh, of it's, take, I, I, wait, this I, took a strange direction. I, you. yeah no no I, I you can't see it because i i i feel i i feel too guilty to give you a tour of my apartment but um <laughs> there's just dirt the wall, yeah exactly it's just mounds of dirt my whole apartment <laughs> is just have one mound that's my bed. envelopes are all just stacked up <laughs> right, right, yeah. comic books does not pay well you're hiding the fact no, that it's really true you knock over the wall and there's a big mansion there. I assume that's... Yeah, just- yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, this is all like... This. Yeah, anything further than this is like a backdrop. If I, put I can't back, read. I Why would I have a bookshelf? <laughs> right. These are, real. These are real. I'll just look at the pictures. That's what you can say. But no. But, but my, my keepsakes are for every book except one, I have original art for that was a gift from one of the artists. So I have a page from Jeff Lemire, the cover to issue nine of Sweet Tooth. 
And what was really wonderful about that is it's over my couch. So as I was watching Sweet Tooth on Netflix, my cover of Sweet Tooth was watching Sweet Tooth on Netflix. Wow. I have an original page of um, The Unwritten uh, by Peter Gross. I also have uh, the, the, co- the original cover art to Yuko Shimizu's original cover art to the first, the cover of The Unwritten uh, framed. I have uh, a page for about Boro Panicelli for Unknown Soldier. I have a page from Cliff Chang from yeah. Beware the Creeper, which I didn't work on. But I worked on worked with him on Human Target. Oh, so Cliff Chiang is brilliant. Cliff, Cliff is brilliant. Cliff I love, is I love brilliant. His Catwoman. Catwoman is yeah, so and cool. it's impossible not to like his Catwoman. His Catwoman is so good. I'll have to have him I on better. the channel soon, Cliff. If you're watching, you should. You should. Yeah, yes. on my hit list. So yes, good. no, Cliff is fantastic. Oh, yeah. uh, I have a piece of my Cuddleston from a book we did together called Nemovore. I have another piece of art from Jock, which was the very last page of The Losers. And if you're, oh, if you know, nice. If you know the very last page of The Losers, it's Jensen and Pooch as Jensen gives you the finger. And it's literally the first thing you see when you open my front door is Jensen giving you the finger. That's it. Oh, you'll have to post the picture. I love that. I love Jensen. <laughs> Jensen's my favorite comic book character. Jensen's great. I got to interview Andy Diggle. Jaka, I'm having on soon. I cannot wait. Oh, oh two fantastic awesome. creators. But no, The Losers. Such a great scene. You worked on The Losers, did you, as an editor? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I started off as assistant editor and then I became full editor on the last year of the book. I think I, I'm credited as of issue 21 as, as full editor. Would that have been your first Vertigo series you worked on? Or I, I think te- it's of my first Vertigo series as an editor. I think technically Human Target with Peter Milligan, Javier mm-hmm. Polito, and Cliff Chang, it beats it by a couple months. I think I was assistant editor on that first for a couple months. Man, how have you worked on Vertigo? You seem so young and yet you have like, you've worked on <laughs> that, that's it. That's an extreme compliment. Well, you know, I assume- no, I, Someone with your, you know, your list of the stuff you've worked on. I, how are you not 80? And you still have so much more left. In it. You're, you're definitely leaving. Well, n- knock on wood that I have so much more left. I mean, and I have a, I have a portrait in my basement that is beat to shit. So, um, <laughs> so, so that's my secret right there. <laughs> there you go. That just, what does that say about your vertical days? No, but imagine that. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You, you must, Will Dennis is the editor. Why do you even need an editor because of your editing experience? Or like, I what's love, that like? I love having an editor. My, oh, yeah. I, I I'm different from most comic book creators, I think, because when I'm doing a book, the editor is actually the first person I go to. I go to the editor first, because I think what most comic book creators do is they get an artist, then they find everybody else, and the editor is like kind of the last person they bring on board. My editor is the first person I bring on board. And part of that is because I know creatively for all the books that I work on, I like having a different, so my, my books are so personal that I need someone there to check me and be kind of like, hey, yeah. you know, maybe you, you're bringing a little too much of yourself in here, or, or this is a little bit more you than the character and all that kind of stuff. So oh, yeah. I need, I need uh, an editor there d- just in general. But then on top of that, I need an, um, but then on top of that, there's such a resource in finding artists and finding collaborators and, and all that. Every book I've worked on, I come at it with an artist I have in mind. And my editor is always like, we can do better than that. Give me, give me a little bit. And mm-hmm. we find, you know, and that's how I found Aaron. And that's how I found Alex. And every time I've worked with an editor, they've, uh, they've, they've always made the book better. And, and the, I am careful with the editors I work with. I tend to work with editors I know, or if I don't know, I know their work very well. Yeah. Um, I get really nervous working with an editor I don't know because you can get bad notes. But if I'm with an editor I trust, I very much want to be a partner. I want them to be part of my process. Yeah, nice. Oh, absolutely. I think, you know, because of course you have that editing experience, I think that kind of all becomes utilized in something like that. Yeah. But so with the good Asian, you know, and this creative team, did you assemble most of this creative team? Was this you? Me, me and Will did it together. I, you know, it was definitely a case of- Making your own Avengers kind of, you're just- <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, it definitely was. I, and, and again, it started with, we were looking for the right artist. And, um, you know, we, I knew I wanted him to be Asian, primarily because there was so much about the culture I didn't want to have to explain. I didn't want to have to micromanage of like what yeah. the different things looked like. So we wanted to be Asian just for that, that shorthand. And, um, and one of the things we found, that, which was nice to find, was so many Asian artists were working. You know, it was hard to find someone who wasn't working on like a Marvel DC book. Mm-hmm. And, um, and then we started with, you know, when we're trying to figure out like who's the right person for this, 
like I think I told Will was like who's like the Asian Darwin Cook and then and Cliff was and then Will was like I think Cliff let's talk to Cliff Cliff if, if there's an Asian Darwin Cook it feels like it's gonna be Cliff Chang and and I was like Cliff is way too busy and way too important to be working with us and Cliff was way too busy way too important to be working with us but the thing that's awesome about Cliff was just like well I really like this project let me um see you know I'll keep an ear out if if I can think of any artists that you know for right. it and what ended up happening was Alex was visiting New York Comic Con. He no, met I'm... up with uh, Cliff at like a mixer at a drink up and he was finishing Outpost Zero and he was looking for his next thing. Yeah. And Cliff was looking at his stuff and was asking like, just doing catch up with his life. And Alex has got a really amazing story where he's, I think at the age of 34, he found out he was adopted and his adopted father was Asian and his, uh, his birth father was Asian. So at the age of 34, he found out he was Asian. He didn't know that. And so shortly after that, he, he was already looking to move, but he moved to, um, he headed down to uh, Vietnam and, and cause he found out he was Vietnamese. And so he got back in part of his touch with his culture. And it, he said like being in Vietnam for the first time in his life, if he shaved, he would, could walk around and he saw people that looked like him. And it was the first time in his life that that had been the case cause he didn't know he was Vietnamese. And so when he met with Cliff, he was just like, yeah, so I'm at this really interesting point in my life where I'm thinking about like what it is to be Asian and how, what is my relationship to my Asian heritage and all that kind of stuff. And Cliff was just like, oh, do I have the book for you? Of course, that a little, it all just works out. All just slots like it together. All just works out. So that's how we got Alex. From there, you know, we sent a bunch of colorist ideas. And, and you found Lee in a cave? You found yeah, Lee? Yeah, he unfortunately <laughs> dredged Lee out from a cave and said, no, we have to use all on, you, this Lee, man as opposed to everybody Lee, else. Lee, over here. Come on, yeah, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Boy. He, with, with, with dog treats, he kind of Yeah, that's basically over. what I did. Then he punched me and then said, fine, I'll do it. But he <laughs> yeah, only yeah. did my podcast for personal gain. He just punched me to let, so I knew my place. Yeah, that's all he does. Everything is just for personal gain. That's why he does everything. Maybe that's and, why he's uh, the most successful colorist of all time because he just. Maybe it might just be. It might just be the master. And, the and then yeah, and then I brought Jeff over for um Jeff over who I work with on Infidel because I knew he did great stuff. And then we were looking for a cover artist. And you know, at first I had this idea about doing more design covers, and my thing was just like kind of because like, I kind of want to do something that looks cool the way like Dave Johnson would. And Will was just kind of like, well, why don't we just ask Dave Johnson then? And Dave said yes, which I didn't believe. He said yes. And then we had our team. You've had so many like fantastic cover artists. I mean, I believe even some Asian artists as well. Like, was yeah. Jay Lee, did you have a Jay Lee cover? I, I didn't have a Jay Lee cover only because I had a Jay Lee cover on Infidel. Oh, and that's so what for, I'm thinking about. Yeah, you, you yeah. did have a Jay Lee. Oh, yeah, yeah, you had Jay Lee. Yeah, so we had Jay Lee and Yuko Shimizu on Infidel. And for the good Asian, I wanted every variant to be from a different Asian artists that I'd never worked with before. So that was kind of like, it was kind of my way of like, because for comics, for me- You're networking, you're building make, up connections. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But it's very much a way to like work with old friends and make new friends. And so the variants became a way to like make some new friends and just like, I've never worked with you before. Let, let's, let's work together. Oh, nice. That's not half bad. But yeah, no, some fantastic and just a fantastic crew. But so while we're talking about good Asian, let me ask you this question. Yeah. At its core, I think at every comic or every story, there is a core. I, you know, George Lucas said for Star Wars, it's a tale about family at its core, just wrapped yeah. in this inter intergalactic space battle. For you, at its core, what is good Asian about? At its core, what do you think really represents good Asian? I mean, I think if I'm going to be that reductive about it, it's about identity. It's about someone yeah. trying to figure out who he is based on, you know, his obligations to himself, his obligations to his family, his different families. But, but it's also him trying to define that identity. And, and in, in him defining his identity, it was also a bit too about trying to define what Asian, being Asian American is, which I think we're, I feel very lucky where that feels like a conversation we're having in public right now. Yeah. And I wanted the book to kind of contribute to that conversation. And, 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 and part of the way it contributes, I think, to that conversation is this is our past. This is how we got to this place. And this is why some reactionary stuff that's happening right now might be in, you know, might be in good, well-meaning, but might be the stuff that it might take us back to where we were a hundred years ago. And so that's part of like what I'm trying to parse through the book of this is what our history is, because if you look at our history, this is why we are at the where we're at. And so how do we move forward in a way that it doesn't inadvertently just move us backwards? 
Yeah, I th- and identity, I think, is such... Yeah, and how do you say it? it does seem like that vital part of Good Asian, like we can see throughout the issues. But no, and so with the ending of the Good Asian, is there a possibility for more Good Asian? Is this something you kind of talked about on John's... One? I did kind of talk about it on John, so it's not a... Compl- but this is the second place I'm talking about it, so so it's next to an exclusive. Um, it, uh, <laughs> next to an exclusive. Thanks. Next to an exclusive. Porn, I get yeah, the second no, I, exclusive. I, I, I yeah. <laughs> I'm only messing up on this. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. It, I wish I could. I'm trying it so hard to give you like more excuses. Um, but no, no. So uh, we end the Good Asian with Edison Hart will return. We are greenlit for an Ed- Edison Hart sequel. Um, uh, so I know exactly what that story is. Uh, unfortunately, like the first Good Asian, there's not a lot written about it. So yeah. it's going to involve again a lot of research to kind of figure out sort of this to in the same way for the the Good Asian. I had to do a ton of research on a topic that wasn't written about. And so I had to Tetris sources together. It's looking like it's gonna be like that for the next volume as well. The next story as well. I know exactly what I want it to be about. Um, the the one thing I unfortunately, you know, the thing I say about it is um, it'll, it you won't get it as soon as you want, but you'll get it quicker than you think. Um, be, it, it's gonna take a while to kind of get the second volume, the, the next volume out, partly because of the research, also partly too, like me and Alex are gonna go, go off and work on different things for a minute before coming back together. I'm so geeked out about Alex's next project. Like it's so cool and I can't talk about it. He, I'm sure he can't talk about it because no one, it hasn't been announced yet, but I'm nice. so jazzed. Nice. I'm gonna be the first person in line to buy that book. Um, so jazzed about it. I've got some other stuff that I'm really jazzed about. Comic work or like TV work? Comic comic work this time comic work TV work as well but I'm very jazzed I've got actual comic things on the hopper that balancing the both will probably give me a, a nervous breakdown in the next year but I'm very excited about the comic stuff I have lined up Love that you. it hopefully in the next few months or several months or <laughs> sometime within the next year I can definitely talk about um, and uh, but yeah but we're gonna work on that stuff and then come back together and hopefully by that point. I'll have a bigger uh, battle plan on, on like the research and how to like sort of tell all that. So this is not the end of the good Asian. That's a great note. It is not the end of Edison Hark. There will be more Edison Hark. Uh, you know, I think I, you know, I would love to tell more stories about Edison Hark, you know, one book at a time, we will see sort of what the sales uh, audience looks like for it. But it will have the same title, the good Asian going forward. Uh, the, these are all good questions that I have not answered yet. I you, am going yeah, to. Is it still in that kind of pre-production phase in your mind? It, it, yeah, no, it very much is. It, it's still very much in the development phase. I, I'm also a weird person where um, uh, um, names are the last thing that come to me. Uh, most of the time, names will come to me last. It's I really need to know what the story is about before I I get the um I, I get all that. And then, uh, and, and yet like one, okay, so here's, a, here's an exclusive that I don't know if anyone will care about, but um, in the second volume of The Good Asian, which comes out on May 18th, and so, uh, so, so yeah. Yeah, everyone can look forward. So you can buy the first volume now and then wait a month and get the second volume yeah. for the whole story. But, and I, I want this to be a tradition when as, in hopefully my image books where I get the freedom to do that at the very least, is I'm including the original pitch that I sent image to get The Good Asian greenlit. Nice. And, and, and part of that that I find interesting is going over that, part of that is the uh, two page synopsis of the entire story that I pitched, which a lot of it's, which has changed, but you get to see sort of like what I originally sort of pitched. The thing I find interesting is with the exception of Edison Hark, every name of every character is different. That in the course of writing, I just like found names I like better. And that's very much part of my process. I will just like constantly like, uh, does he feel like a Danny? Does he feel like a Billy? Does he feel like a Frankie? And like, I'm constantly changing those things up. Yeah. but. One of the things, but but that is uh, the thing I'm trying to do for all my books is that I think online you can find a lot of scripts, comic book scripts, yeah. but uh, you can find, it's harder to find like pitches, what pitches look like. And so in Infidel, I, we include the entire like 16 page um, pitch proposal for Infidel in the Gradation volume two, because we had a relationship with Image, that was only like a six page, five to six page sort of pitch that we needed to kind of greenlit, but you'll get to be able to see what that thing looked like. And awesome. hopefully for aspiring comic book creators, that's a, you know, it's it's a process that it's that works for me, a format that works for me if you're looking at how to pitch a pitch a book. 
Oh, nice. So you, that'll be in uh, volume two, which comes out May 18th, did you May say? May 18th, yes, May 18th. So you can get volume one and volume two now. Yes. Absolutely fantastic. But yeah, so, I mean, do you kind of have little slight ideas of what the return could be like? Or are you like, like you're just going to... Oh, no, no, I have, I totally know, I totally know what it's about. I told. I have a general idea of what the mystery is. I have a general idea of the areas the mystery will take us. Um, I even think I know what a couple of the big twists will be. The, but the big thing, and this was a case where the first, first Good Asian as well, this volume of Good Asian as well, the research dictates a lot of it. Yeah. So if the research tells me to go one way or another, that's always first and foremost. So it's hard to say at this stage if um, if what I have in my head will look even remotely what the finished story will look like, because I, I'm still in the process of not even doing the research, but trying to figure out where the research exists, trying to figure out where I can find the answers I'm looking for. I tell you what, I enjoyed the history in Good Asia more than I enjoy history class in school. So you have that coming for you. <laughs> I appreciate, you for you. I appreciate that. I appreciate I'm never that. Gonna use, I'm never going to use history when I grow up. And all these comic book writers are doing stories where they're doing history <laughs> This sucks, man. I'm, I'm not going to get so I'm going to have to write about some historic event. But no, you actually make it interesting. So fair play to that. you. No, uh, points like, it's been an absolute honor, Chandler. Before we wrap up, are you on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, anything like that? Yes, I'm on Instagram at real underscore porn sack. Uh, no, I'm under Twitter as real underscore porn sack. I'm on Instagram as real underscore PSAC. And those are the two primary places to find. Awesome. Me. Yeah. And so anything, you know, you can talk about promote. Let's just wrap it all up here. Good Asian issue 10 is in comic book stores now. Call up your local comic book store, send them an email, go into them, pick up the Good Asian issue 10. Volume 2 comes out May 18th. Anything else? I believe you mentioned this on a word balloon, which everyone should also go check out. New Marvel story coming out. I do. I have a Jimmy Woo versus Shang-Chi story coming out in May, which is part of their Marvel Voices identity. I am so honored and really jazzed to be uh, to have an issue of the Silver Coin with Michael Walsh. Uh, yeah. I, yeah, I'll be writing issue 14, I think is how it's look, looking. You but, get to um, join the list of creators. Michael yeah. Walsh is a dancer. He's so brilliant. Like He's just getting everyone to come on. I know, I know. So I mean, that it's a murderer's row of, of talent he's got on that book, so it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. Absolutely. So but, when uh, did that come out, did you say? I don't know when the issue of Silver Coin comes out. It's issue 14. So whenever issue 14 comes out, <laughs> is when it comes out. But I actually don't know. Mm-hmm. I, I have this thing where I, w- I have to work really far ahead because I never know when my schedule is just going to blow up. So sometimes I get it either right in the deadline or you, you get it way in advance. But I've it's never been a good been problem so to have so. being so busy. It's a good problem to have. Yes, yes, yes. It is a good problem to have. I keep telling myself it is a good problem to have as, as, <laughs> as, as, as my nerves fray and I come closer to it. It's all, it's all worth it for that Lee Lowridge, you know, the, those <laughs> Lee Lowridge colors. It'll all come it's back. True. It's Everyone true. Everyone is trying to go check out Lee as well. Like, yes. Yeah. yeah. If you want to. He's on. If some, you want to. Yeah. I mean, it, your prerogative. But no, is that all you, you can talk about anyway? That is all I can talk about. Hopefully, you know, I'll come back when it's time to talk about the next few projects. I'm really jazzed about them. Can't say a word about them yet, unfortunately. Go into your head, um, a little sniper, yeah. Doc. Just there. Yeah, I know. It, very much so. Very, very much so. So if we see him just fall off screen, we'll all know what that's about. But no, guys, thank you so much for watching. Pornsack, it's an honor chatting with you. Thank you so much for taking the time, especially on this day where the issue come out uh, came out. I really do appreciate you coming on, and it's an honor to chat with you, as always. I don't much have people back on the channel a second time, but I loved our chat the first time so much. I knew I had to have you back on. So thank you so much for chatting with me, man. Thank you. Thank you. I really appreciate this. Thank uh, you so talk- much. I'll talk to you a little bit off air, but guys, before we finish up, you can go follow me over on Twitter if you'd like, at Sambo Gizmo one Please make sure to like and subscribe, and as always, if you have the means, please make sure to donate to the National Deaf Children Society, and there'll be a link from the description. Every cent helps. It'd be much appreciated. But yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Please like and subscribe. Go read The Good Asian, and Edison Hark will return. I'll see you all later.